Hi guys, picked this up in Poundland the other day. 12 to 250 voltage test pen. Fine display, compact design. Some instructions. Good glasses to read them. Before use, check the tester is functioning correctly by testing on a known live circuit. Always plus, always hold the plastic handle. Never touch the uninsulated end of the tester. Testing for mains power, AC voltage. Probe the live metal contact with screwdriver end. Touch the direct test button. That one. And the voltage level will be indicated. Testing for a line break. Hold the screwdriver end of the tester against the insulation of the cable and touch the induction break point test button. The symbol, uh, lightning, will indicate will be indicated on the display if the cable is live. Run the tester along the cable until the lightning sign cable uh, symbol disappears. This is the point at which the cable may be broken. Testing for earth to check the appliance has a satisfactory earth connection. It must first be plugged into an electrical supply. Touch a metal area on the appliance with the screwdriver end of the voltage tester. If the appliance is earthed satisfactorily, there will be no indication on the display. An earth fault will produce the lightning symbol. The voltage mains tester does, doesn't require a battery. No user serviceable parts. So if we take it apart, there'll be nothing in there to look at. So I'll we'll take that label off. Let's see if there's anything hidden underneath it, because it does look like this back panel comes off, doesn't it? coming out. And there is a circuit board in there to look at. There's our circuit board. Taking it out might break the solder connection. Doesn't look like a terribly good solder connection, but it is a... No, I'm right. It's loose already. <laughs> right. Well, there's our circuit board. Must be some contacts along there. For the display. Drop it.
I suppose I should have tested it before I took it apart, shouldn't I? Would have been a good idea. But I'm guessing that's carbonised rubber or something to conduct. Let's see that solder wasn't holding at all on there. So those two pads there, when you touch those two pads, it'll be a capacitance type connection of some sort. Hmm, well not a lot going on there. And I can see where I've levered that up. It was either glued or heat welded, heat welded in some way or other along those little tags because that's all broken along there. So no doubt now it's unsafe because you could potentially get hold of that bit when it's touching the live terminal. I think the fact that just fell off straight away. Yeah. So I guess what I ought to do is run some glue along there so it doesn't come apart when I'm playing with it. back together whether I've got that back in right Right, we'll now see if it actually works. I've got an extension lead here, so there should be power on it. So if I press the induction breakpoint test, we should get a lightning signal there, a little zigzag. Uh, no, yet. Yeah. That may be where the solder joint has given way. If I push it that way, it's making contact. If I push it the other way, it's not. So, yeah, I've uh, <laughs> probably ruined it by taking it apart. Um, to test the direct test there, we need to put it into the live which we can't do without moving the gate out of the way on UK plugs. We have to push something in the earth there. There's a plastic gate that slides down and opens up the live and the neutral. So, I don't recommend you do this, but that has moved the gate out of the way. Problem is, this is all going to be facing the wrong way for you to be able to see what I'm doing. 
Uh, how are we going to do this? Don't want to touch anything metal, just in case. So I'm touching the plastic case and the plastic screwdriver. And if I push that in there, uh, you can't see what's happening. Right, I'm going to have to reposition the camera. What can we... Right, so move that around. Right, just about see it there if I wobble it around. So press the direct test button there. And I can see what it does. It starts at 12 volts, it goes 12, 16 something 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 all the way up to 220 12 36 55 yeah 12 36 55 110 220 oh it's just off the screen do that again right There we are. If I hold it all in the right position, note that I'm not touching anything metal. And plastic, plastic, plastic. Except for obviously I'm pressing that button there. Anyway, that's what it does. Not very exciting. And trying to get it lined up for the camera is quite difficult. I don't recommend you do anything like that, but that is the only way you can open the gate to test the live and neutral. <laughs> this used to be my dad's extension lead. Just drilled a hole through there, right the way through so it could be screwed onto the wall. Probably not the best thing to do. Hmm. That's got to be 30 or 40 years old, I would guess. Hmm. Okay, so yeah, it does work. Possibly a problem with, because I've taken it apart, that solder joint work, broke. So you have to push it for it to make contact. You have to push it in the right direction. Oh, let's zoom out again a bit. Yeah. So solder joint in there broken, so I have to push it so it's actually making contact. If I push it the other way, it doesn't make contact. So pushing down like that, no contact. Pushing up like that, it does make contact. So that's not a particularly safe way of doing anything. But that's my fault for breaking it. Yeah, well, it was a pound. It does work. Part two... I was a bit concerned I may not have been given a fair assessment because I'd already taken it apart and that solder joint had failed when I opened it. So I've been and bought another one. So this one is unopened, still got the label in place. I'll try and do the same thing that was giving me a bit of concern. Uh, press the induction brake test. And on this one, this is the opened one. Nothing that way up. Result that way up. And I think that's just the fact that that solder joint's gone. Whereas this one, 
press that button again, yeah that one, nothing. Right, what that tells me is that the live wire, it's a three wire cable, the live wire must be on the bottom. And so when we're doing that on the bottom, turn it the other way up, press that, press that. Yeah, it still stops when I push down on it, whereas if I lift up on it, yeah. So, yeah, solder joint gone in that one. This one, press down there, or up there, and the live wire is on the bottom, which was coincidental that it happened to work out right with that one. Because if we'd have done it the other way up, yeah. No result, and no result pushing down. Yeah, no result pushing up, no result pushing down, but turn the wire over, the cable over. Now we've got the live wire on the bottom, pushing up, and we get the signal. Pushing down, we get nothing. This one, the new unbroken one, oh, we get a little bit of a signal there on the top. But definitely pushing down there, we get it. Lifting up there, we get it. And we get a bit of one on the top. But yeah, so I say that must be the live wire out of the three wires that are in that cable. It happens to be on the bottom at that point. Now that's interesting. Not touching anything. It's the induction must be doing some sort of must be some sort of capacitive thing. Oh look. <laughs> oh gosh. Very reliable this, isn't it? I must have some Electrostatic charge. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. I wouldn't call that 100% reliable. Maybe if you knew exactly what you were doing with it and knew what to expect, then you might get the result you want to get. If you see my logic, you may not you may not get a true result. You get what you're expecting to see. Yeah, I think I'll stick to a proper meter. Thanks for watching. If you want more information, check down below in the video description. If you like this video, you might like this one up here. And if you want to subscribe, you can check out my channel over here. Up here is my latest video on my channel and down here is a video playlist associated with the video you've just watched. Thanks again for watching.